So it feels great being out here in the open, but studies show that in reality, we spend 90% of our time indoors. Now, with various studies pointing to COVID-19 being potentially airborne, is it time we pay more attention to the air we are breathing at home? I bought myself an air purifier about five years ago when Singapore was dealing with the regional haze crisis. But you know what? I haven't been using it. It's been sitting here in my storeroom, Ooh, I think for the past three years, so in this episode of Talking Point, I want to find out if we really need air purifiers in our home and just how effective are these things. Sales for air purifiers surged when Singapore was hit by the regional haze in 2018. And when the COVID-19 pandemic struck early this year, demand spiked again. Retailers say sales went up by up to five times compared with the same period last year. Do you have any air purifiers at home? Yeah, I do. I do have an air purifier at home. I run a home studio, so it's very important to keep the air clean at home. What made you get them? Worry about dust and allergies. And do you find that it's been effective? When you breathe, you actually feel that the air is cleaner. As well, you've got smell. Uh. You put it there, the smell will gone. There's less dust. From what I understand, the filter can trap bacteria and viruses. There is growing evidence that suggests COVID-19 is airborne. This means that if I am in a poorly ventilated enclosed space with an infected person, I might contract the virus too. Of course, we're looking at an extended exposure of about 30 minutes. But still, it's better to be safe than sorry. I want to know if air purifiers can rid the air of the coronavirus. So I'm going to the one place that will have all the answers about COVID-19. Singapore's National Centre for Infectious Diseases. Dr. Glory Joy Tan specialises in controlling and preventing infection and was involved in developing a test to check symptoms for COVID-19 infections. So is the air purifier able to catch those particles from the coronavirus? Based on our current understanding, uh, the main modality of transmission of COVID-19 remains primarily through respiratory droplets as well as contact transmission. However, there may be certain circumstances in which airborne transmission of COVID-19 could occur. And uh, this may be in a setting where there are a lot of people within a very enclosed space doing very specific activities, such as speaking in very loud voices or singing. Most of the air filters that we are talking about these days pride themselves on having a HEPA filter. And the HEPA filter holds itself to a very high standard in that it, it's specified to filter out up to, I think, 99.97 of particles. This includes infective pathogens and viruses. And so, I guess an air purifier with a HEPA filter would probably be quite effective, especially if the air sort of circulates through the air purifier multiple times. However, having said that, I think we should be mindful not to think of the air purifier as like a magic bullet. I think the overall strategy to reduce one's risk really would be to include things like frequent hand washing, wiping of surfaces. Air purifier itself, while it may provide an adjunct to improving the air quality, shouldn't be thought of as like the magic bullet to keeping ourselves safe from infective pathogens in general. Basic air purifiers come with what's called HEPA filters and activated carbon. HEPA filters are a grade of filter that can remove microscopic particles in the air. Together with the activated carbon, these air purifiers claim to remove harmful substances from the air by up to 99.9%. An air purifier with a HEPA filter may protect us from COVID-19 in the air, but as I've learned, it's no magic bullet. COVID-19 isn't the only thing that's lurking in our air. Many studies have reported that the air inside our homes is far dirtier than the air outside. Shocking, isn't it? Professor Tam Kok Wai has been studying indoor air quality for more than 30 years 
and he's going to tell me what's in every breath I take. So Professor, tell me what would be some of the most common contaminants we find in the air? I think we broadly can classify as three different categories. Mm -hmm. The first is what we call the physical contaminants. So these are principally dust. Okay. Uh, the second category, I think they're much more pervasive. It, it, it is gaseous. It flows all around the place and uh, we basically breathe it in. And the third are things which are basically living organisms, what we call the biological uh, category. And from these three categories, where do they come from? Uh, let's take dust for as mm. example, the physical ones. I'm sure that this is a very common household thing. The vacuum cleaner, everybody... yeah. One of the things that we must understand is that when it sucks in the dust, you can see the filter inside over here. Yep. The filter does not remove everything. Air that is being sucked in must come out and unfortunately the finer dust basically follow the airstream out. Oh. The finer ones actually become airborne and these finer ones are actually much more damaging because they are small, they remain airborne and they actually go much deeper into our lungs. Uh, the other part that I'm going to mention may scare you a little bit. Okay. When it is actually being sucked through this, it actually churns. Yep. They're grinding. So the bigger particles become smaller particles. Oh. Imagine your cockroach egg. Oh. And the very thing that you actually don't want, this get ground and then maybe become very small particles that get airborne. So when we vacuum our homes, we remove the dust that is visible to the eye, but inadvertently release finer pollutants which are invisible back into the air. To avoid this, Prof Tam recommends using a vacuum cleaner with a water filter. The water will prevent finer pollutants from being released back into the air. What else contributes to pollutants in the air? Gaseous pollutants is one of the most uh, important exposures okay. that we must guard against. Let's take cooking for example. Yeah. Firstly, there are two types of cooking. One uses gas or town gas, uh. which is still quite common. But you think the source of the heat is really because of the combustion of the town gas. Okay. And that combustion will produce byproducts and we're inhaling them. Not all of which are actually good for the body. Are there any other areas that would be of concern in our home? Oh. I think there's one, one last category yeah. that I mentioned, which is the biologicals. There are things which are very minute in nature, the bacteria, in particular mold. So if you smell something musky, mm. uh, it's actually an indication that it is mold infested. And some of these mold, they produce chemicals which are toxic to the body. So it seems that the air in our homes is a hotbed of dangerous contaminants. Small debris such as dust, harmful gases such as carbon monoxide and spores from mould. They can enter our lungs, leading to respiratory problems and chronic conditions such as heart disease. And these days, air purifiers don't just come with HEPA filters. They come with ionizers, with UV light, with ozone generators, and they claim to kill microorganisms and remove harmful chemicals. All of which can cost a hundred to over a thousand Singapore dollars. The bigger the coverage area, the higher the cost. So which one do I choose for my home? Only one way to find out. I'm putting this machine to the test. I've discovered that air purifiers with the HEPA filter can help filter out the much-feared COVID-19 virus from the air. But how effective is it against regular dust, gas and biological pollutants such as mold? Air purifiers now come with add-ons like ultraviolet light, ozone generators and ionizers. But do I really need them? Helping me figure this out is Professor David Chong. He's done extensive research on ways to improve indoor air quality in the tropics. I'm meeting him today with Muhammad Jufri Ahmad Bajuri. He's been thinking of getting an air purifier for his home because his father-in-law and wife both suffer from asthma. He believes an air purifier can rid his home of allergens like dust, which usually triggers an attack. But he's not quite sure yet if it's worth the investment. There are so many air purifiers out in the market these days. How should I go about choosing one? It's my personal opinion. Yeah. I would say the conventional HEPA filter. Okay. Right. Uh, with activated carbon 
what is important is really something that is uh, has been tested and proven, which is the conventional uh, HEPA filter. And what we see in the back here, yes. I mean, these are the dirt especially the ultra fine particles that can be arrested by this HIPAA filter. As the dirt accumulates over time, the filter degrades and has to be replaced with a new one. Very often some of these come with not just the HIPAA filter but also activated carbon. Activated carbon does absorb pollutant from the air. In fact, we use it a lot uh, in commercial building when they have basically odour. They may to some extent remove some of the, uh, the chemicals but do take note our environment is very hot and humid, so moisture content in the air is relatively high. They will deteriorate with time. I've heard about other you know, purifiers coming with things like ozone generator, ionized air or, or UV light. Do I need them in my air purifier? There's a word of caution that uh, they may be effective, but there are also side effects for some of them. You need to check with the professionals uh, if you want to use those technologies. While ultraviolet light can kill harmful microorganisms, it can also hurt our eyes and skin, injuring the cornea and increasing the risk of skin cancer. Ionizers and ozone generators, on the other hand, produce ozone. And breathing in too much ozone can affect how our lungs function and make it more prone to infection. So for a home setting, all we need is essentially a basic HEPA filter with activated carbon. One that is suited for Jufri's bedroom costs about 500 Singapore dollars. Only one thing left to do, and that's to test this in Jufri's home and to see just how effective it is in removing dust and other pollutants like bacteria and gases, which could be dangerous to our health. Hi, hi, Jufri. Hey, hi, Steve. Hi. You're here. I am here with the air purifier. Oh. I'm not Jufri's only visitor today. Joey Feng is an independent air quality inspector. She runs tests to find out how much contaminants there are in the air in an enclosed space. Hi, hi. Are you Joey? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, Joey today, she's going to help me test the effectiveness of the air purifier by taking air pollutant readings in Jufri's home before and after we run the machine. Okay guys, please come in. This is my bedroom. Okay. So this is where you spend a lot of time and I guess you want the air to be good, you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, Joey, how do we check the air quality in this room? Firstly, the AC has to be turned on and okay. the door has to be closed because we need to contain the space. So this is to test your temperature, relative humidity and carbon dioxide. For this is air velocity. Air velocity, like whether it's a breeze or not. Exactly, whether it's stuffy, whether there's a draft okay. or not. So this is carbon monoxide. This will be testing for VOCs and formaldehyde, harmful gases. If the results are bad, we should be concerned about that one. And this is also for a dust level, your PM 2.5 and your PM 10. So you can tell whether this is a dusty room? Yes, we can. Especially if you know you have sinuses, asthmatic, you know, that triggers, you want to know your dust level. My family have that. Oh dear. Okay. All this dust problem. Next, Joey sets up a device that can tell how much mold and bacteria there is in the room. Basically, we will put the agar plate inside mm. uh, and then it will suck the air, whatever is being transmitted onto the agar plate and then we send it back to the lab to analyse it. So now we wait. Once the checks are complete, it's time to turn on the air purifier. There we go. Leave it running for a while. I'll put it on auto. For this experiment, we will leave the air purifier running for about an hour and that should give a machine of this size enough time to purify the air in Jufri's room. Joey heads back in to take the pollutant readings. It will take about a week for the test results to be processed. Meantime, I'm leaving the air purifier with Jufri so that he can use it for longer to see if there is any discernible difference in the air quality of his home. And we're about to find out that he's in for a shock. Uh, I hear you've got the result from your test, right? This is alarming. It's almost four times over the limit.
One week ago, I started my journey to find out how effective air purifiers are in removing dust and other airborne pollutants. I conducted an experiment in Muhammad Jufri Ahmad Bajuri's flat. His father-in-law and wife both suffer from asthma, so he's hoping that an air purifier can help to alleviate their symptoms. Since we last met, Jufri's been using the air purifier regularly at home. So you've had the air purifier for about a week now. Have you noticed any improvement in the air at home? Wow, yes. A lot yeah? of improvement, Steve. Yeah, my family seems to be more restful and calm. Is it? Yes, okay. better air. Well, let's find out what the results actually tell us. Sure. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. Hi, nice to see you guys again. Yeah, I hear you've got the result from your test, right? Overall, uh, in general, the number seems good, but there are a few parameters that I want to highlight mm. that it's a bit concerning. You see in the red oh, colour well, sign. What is TVOC? Right, yeah. it's total volatile organic compounds which means okay. chemical gases, mm -hmm. which can be commonly found in like uh, disinfectant, perfume sprays, detergent, all these household products. So the ideal is 1,000 parts per billion. This obviously has exceeded limit of 1,000 ppb. This is alarming. It's almost four times over the limit. Is, is it dangerous? Prolonged exposure for elevated amount, yes. Even with the air purifier turned on, it's still on the high side. So you might have to take note on that. What are the other things that may contribute to, to this number? Formula is a subset of TVOC, commonly found in newly renovated spaces, varnishes, newly painted house, newly bought furniture that gives off the gases. But in this particular case, because your formula height is zero, so it's largely still on like your household products. What about cleaning? If you clean the floor with... Uh, detergent, so yes. Detergent. All these oh. have very little amount that contributes together. There's one more, yeah. one more so column. The other one, it's total bacteria count. Anyway, it has reduced significantly after the air purifier is on. That's actually quite a significant drop. I'm impressed. Jufri had switched on the air purifier in his room for just one hour. And the results overall were quite positive. The levels of chemical gases such as benzene, dust, bacteria and mold all dropped. So Jeffrey, what do you think? Actually, I'm quite surprised. All this while, I've been not knowing that uh, I'm having uh, this air pollution in mm. my own home. But since the air purifier was uh, installed in my home for the past one week, I realised changes in my family. For oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially my dad. Once in a while, he will start to sneeze. Yeah. And that sneeze will you know, become more stronger and stronger. He will be, we need a uh, pump Hello. because oh. asthma oh, starts to come okay. But this week, I mean, it's a bit quieter for me. Oh. I can sleep better. So are you convinced? Do you think you would like to have an air purifier running you know, all yeah. the time? Yeah, I'm very, very convinced. Joey's test proved that the air purifier really does help to clean the air. But I wonder if there are alternatives out there for those of us who don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on an air purifier. I'm going to try and find out from an international authority on indoor air. Professor Chandra Sekar is an indoor air quality consultant who also studies heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. What are the other options besides having an air purifier at home? The fundamental word is ventilation. And ventilation means you've got to let the air from outside mm -hmm. come into the house, into the rooms, and then provide that kind of dilution that can take place. Let me talk about this unit that we are seeing here. Which, this is fan filter unit. Uh -huh. There is a fan and there's also a filter. Okay. And what it does is it takes the air from outside and then you have air from outside providing nice ventilation into the room. So you see that the air is actually blowing into the room. Right. And this is coming from outside and this is what ventilation is all about. This fan filter unit is a motorized research prototype for removing harmful airborne particles from recirculating air. And it is not yet available commercially. And I'm sure it costs quite a bit of money too, right? There is a cost to it, but it requires a proper installation. You cannot just right. kind of pick it up from somewhere and install it yourself. Okay. Are there other alternatives that will allow for this same idea to work? Similar effect, certainly. We open the windows everywhere in the house. Sure. What we expect is air from outside through natural ventilation comes into the house, into okay. the room. Now, it'll be great if we had very high wind speeds, 
but in Singapore, we don't usually experience high wind speeds. As you can see, uh, not much. You depend on the wind speed and the direction of the wind to let the outside air come okay. in. We can facilitate that by perhaps placing a pedestal fan. Oh, yeah? And you can expect the same thing to function a little bit like the fan filter unit right, is okay. to draw the air in. The idea is facilitate cross ventilation whenever you can. Okay. That's the whole purpose of what we're talking about here. Does the air conditioner or the air conditioning system provide any kind of filtration for the air that I'm breathing? There is a filter that's attached to the air conditioning unit, but that's the basic minimum. They wouldn't be removing the fine particles. Professor Chandra's research also shows that when you sleep in an air-conditioned room, the amount of carbon dioxide can be up to six times more than the levels outdoors, lowering the relative concentration of fresh air and triggering headaches and possibly fatigue. Would it make sense then to therefore be in the air-conditioned room for a few hours and then stop it, switch it off? That's the right strategy. Just have to be mindful of the fact when you open the windows, don't open it straight away after turning the air conditioning off. Right. For the simple reason, our outside air is very hot and humid, warm and humid if you like. Right. If that air comes in, the surfaces are cold, there could be potentially some condensation over okay. time. And then you have other issues like mold growing and stuff like that. Chemicals, harmful gases, dirt, mold and bacteria. We can't see them, but they're all in the air. And in our homes, they can also be created as we do things we can't avoid, like cooking and cleaning. So, do I need an air purifier at home? Well, I've discovered that this machine can help remove the bad air. So, perhaps it's time I start using mine again. But I've also learned that it's incredibly important to keep your home well ventilated, so that every breath you take, can be a fresher one.